Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I want to talk to you tonight briefly on the matter of by the rivers of Babylon. By the rivers of Babylon. If you got your Bibles, turn me to the book of Psalms 137, 1 through 7. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I'm going to pray tonight before I start the message. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you that you're drawing souls into the kingdom. Father, I thank you that you're bringing people unto yourself that your name may be lifted up and your power may be shown through this word. In Jesus' name, Father God, may those that are depressed find joy and be freed from oppression. May they have peace, those that are troubled. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Bless God. Hallelujah. Bless God. Amen. So if you got your Bibles, go with me to the book of Psalms 137 and verse 1. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion, when we remembered the house of God, when we remembered the promises of God, and they found themselves stuck in Babylon. We hanged our hearts upon the willows in the midst thereof. Instead of singing a song of joy in the midst of trouble, instead of praising the Lord in the midst of trouble, they hung their hearts on the willow trees. They decided to weep. They decided to mourn. But it says, by the rivers of Babylon. Now, have you ever seen the video clips of Baghdad, Iraq, stuff like that. Baghdad is Babylon. There ain't no river there. So what's he talking about? In Babylon, if there was no river in Babylon, how did they sit by the rivers of Babylon and Ezekiel sit by the river Chabar? How did he do it if there was no rivers in Babylon? There actually was an irrigation canal running from Zion all the way down to Babylon. God bless you too, Brother Daniel. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. But look at this. He gave them a river in the desert. He made a way even in the desert for His glory to be made manifest. So even in their bad decisions, even in their bad decisions, they still had God's provision. Amen. Right before they went into Babylonian captivity, God declares to them, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil. Thoughts to give you an expected end, and you will go and call unto me, and you'll seek me, and you will find me when you search for me with your whole heart. They were in direct disobedience. They were in rebellion. They were walking in the sin of witchcraft, and God said, Honey, I still love you. Baby, you're a wayfaring stranger. You're a backslider, but honey, I'm married to the backslider. I've married myself to those that backslide and go back on their word. But you know what's good about this? God never goes back on His word, even though a lot of times we have a tendency to go back on ours. God's still true to His Word. God's still good to His Word even when we don't feel good about ourselves when we fail at His Word. Come on, somebody. Who am I preaching to tonight? The Bible says that if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart. Wait a minute. 
He said the heart is desperately wicked. Evil above all things. Who can know it but God alone? God knows your heart. And if you love the Lord, but your flesh keeps getting in the way of your faithfulness to God, and you are still got some carnality in your Christian walk, get rid of the carnality by submitting yourself to God. Then, watch this, after you submit yourself to God, once you resist the devil, you can flee. He will flee. Sorry, y'all. Once you resist the devil, he will flee. But you can't resist without first submitting to God. Because remember, he's either Lord of all or not at all. Daniel, God bless you, my brother. Hallelujah. Shirley, God bless you. Amen. Brother Oliver, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. That's you. Yeah. I thought the kids was out here yelling. No, they were over there yelling a second ago. <laughs> I was about to come out and say, Henry, take me to the park. Can't <laughs> <laughs> Anna, can Henry take me to the park? <laughs> I'll take them in a minute. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. See? Told you. <laughs> Love you, sis. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory, Lord. Let's get back into the Word, though. Amen. I know I got down a little rabbit trail, but Let's go back on the right trail. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they carried us away captive, required of us mirth, required of us a song, and they that wasted us required the mirth of mirth saying sing us one of the songs of Zion isn't it interesting they had a chance in their misery to bring forth the glory they had a chance to change the situation by one act of worship. But even at that moment, they refused to give God a sacrifice of praise. Are you hearing me? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If they would have just chose to give God, hallelujah, amen, a sacrifice of praise, then the situation would have changed for them. And they could have had peace in their problem. They could have had joy in their Babylon. But let, let, let me just uh, go a little bit further. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. But they said, How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget Israel, if, if I forget, O oh, Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. They're saying we're staying stuck in a past memory of a past experience with you, Lord. They were stuck in a past move of God. They remembered where they were in God, but they could not get past in their mind where they are in God at that point. And the Bible said a lot of people didn't even enter their rest with the Lord. Those that was in the wilderness didn't enter their rest because they didn't trust the Lord. My friend, we got to learn to trust God. Amen. If He brings you to it, baby, He'll bring you through it. I don't care how dark it gets. He's the light in the darkness. And the Bible said His Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Wait a minute. Even though the trail gets dark, God still shines the light. His light. 
And what he does is because he knows how fickle you and I can be. He knows if he shows you the whole journey, you'll, you'll cop out. Like, mm -mm, nope, I ain't going, Lord. You'll get that jackass mentality and dig your heels into the ground. No, Lord, I ain't going to do it. Diane, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Michael, God bless you, brother. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I'm digging my heels. I ain't going. I ain't going to do what the Lord said. I love the Lord, but nay, Lord, I can't do this for you. Check this out, though. How shall we sing the songs, sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Notice it wasn't their song, it was God's song. And their worship would have got them out of that oppressive state. It would have got them out of their depression and their oppression and their anxiety. But they chose not to give God a sacrifice of praise. Remember, O oh Lord, the children of Edom. The children of Edom are Esau's children, by the way. In the day of Jerusalem, who said, Race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof. I'm just going to go ahead and read the last two verses. So we're actually reading the whole chapter tonight. In the Word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. They're going to find recompense even though it was their sin and their disobedience to God that brought them to Babylon. God said, I've still got a plan. Jesus. Even though you failed, I still got a good plan. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's right. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. God still got a good plan. Even when your plan messes you up, God's plan for your life won't mess up. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let me tell you something. We can hinder God's plan in our life, but we can't deny it. We can delay God's plan for our life, but it cannot be denied. It can be delayed, but it can't be denied. Amen? Because what God said, it shall happen. But our flesh wants to do its own thing, and God says, okay, I'll let you go that way just a little bit. And after you get tired of going on that way and falling every day and and tired of everything you've been doing, and you look back to me, I, I'm just waiting for you to turn your face toward home, says the Spirit of the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Pastor Keith, God bless you, my brother. I love you. Amen. Hallelujah. I appreciate that. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Remember, O oh Lord, the children of Edom. Now listen to this. You know, for them to say, remember Edom, Edom is Esau. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For them to say, remember Esau, they're saying, hey, you know, I know that I've fallen away from the covenant promise. I know I'm giving up my birthright being in my Babylon. I know that I'm stuck in Babylon and I'm about ready to give up on my birthright altogether. And I need you to help me remember your promise. I need you to help me remember Israel. Because Lord, I found myself by the rivers of Babylon. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Somebody watching me tonight, I guarantee you found yourself by the rivers of Babylon. But listen to this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He will reward thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Nothing 
will escape the judgment of God for what's been put on them. Even though it was Israel's sin that put them in that situation. Listen to this, y'all. <laughs> Even though it was Israel's sin that put them in that situation, God said, I'm going to punish Babylon. I'm going to punish the oppressor. I'm going to punish the prisoner, the, the uh, prison guard, for putting my children in that prison. I'm going to place a punishment on the prisoner, the, the prison guard. Listen to this. Did he not do that with what he did to Babylon? Did he not do that with Egypt? The Bible said when they left Egypt, they bankrupt Egypt. The Bible said they left with all. A-L-L. -L. A -L -L. A-L-L. All. The wealth of Egypt. God literally bankrupt Egypt for 450 years of service. For holding them for 450 years. Do you know why they originally got stuck? Help me, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Because the Bible said that Joseph died there. And they didn't fall into captivity till after Joseph had died. But the Bible said after Joseph died, there arose up a Pharaoh that did not know the covenant that Joseph had with the last Pharaoh. And so they took the whole house into captivity. Let me tell you something. Two things that you should never stay in too long. One is Babylon. Don't get comfortable in your Babylon. See, the Bible said that they got comfortable in their sin because they, they got to eating the good of the land which was sacrificed to idols. They got to learning to live happy off the wine that was given to other gods. And there was a few that stood out and said, we're going to go against the grain. We're not going to drink the wine of false gods. We're not going to bow to idols. We ain't going to eat the food sacrificed to idols. We are holy and set apart, consecrated by God. Dobie, God bless you, my brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Listen, y'all. We've been set aside, set apart, consecrated by God. Now, the priest, during the time of the Babylonian captivity, they were out of work. The temple had been destroyed. And the Bible says on Ezekiel's 33rd birthday, 30th birthday, excuse me, Lord, hallelujah, Jesus, amen. On his 30th birthday, Ezekiel is sitting by the river of Chabar. It's going through from Zion's river. It's the irrigation canal. And he's dipping his hand seven times in the water every day and God calls for him. He was trained in one area as a priest just to be released in another as a prophet. He was trained to be a priest but God said I don't want a priest again another priest. I need a prophet. Thank you Holy Ghost. Hallelujah Lord Jesus. Amen. But listen to this, because because of his qualifications as a priest, he was going to come before God as a prophet from him to represent the people as a priest would represent them. He was coming to God to represent them as a priest would go before the holy altar of God, the holy of holies. And he was being a representative of heaven. He became an ambassador for Christ because he had an encounter with the one who calls. You've got to understand something about 
good old brother Abraham, Father Abram at the time. Abram, thank you, Holy Ghost. His father was a Gentile. His father fo followed after many gods. But the Bible says in the book of Acts, Jesus visited our father Abraham when he was still Abram in his uh, father's land and he told him, leave your countrymen and your fellow and everybody else. Leave them and follow the Lord. Look at this now, y'all. Why do you think he left 2,000 deities to follow one God. Because he didn't just hear a word. He saw the word. He saw God in flesh. He saw the manifestation of the glory and what looked like a fleshly being which he knew to be God had called him to go forth and pursue the kingdom of heaven. And he left 2,000 deities. Pastor Jake, God bless you. Amen. Jack, God bless you, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. So finally, I want to say this. I want to say this. Pastor John, God bless you, prophet of God. Amen. Destiny, God bless you. Amen. Doug, God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I want to say this. Abraham left 2,000 deities to follow the one true God. Abraham, Abram was a Gentile. But when he had a true encounter with the one that calls... He went from being a Gentile to a Jew. Uh, he changed his, by God changing his name, he changed his destiny. Cynthia, God bless you, darling. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I just want you to understand tonight, if you've got a Babylon moment, if you feel trapped and stuck in Babylon, and you've been like the people of Israel when they were in Egypt, and you got too comfortable, They got too comfortable in Egypt. And because they got too comfortable in Egypt, when death came for the Pharaoh that believed in God, the Pharaoh that didn't believe in God raised up and made them prisoners. Don't be stuck in your situation too long. Don't be getting too comfortable in your situation. The Bible said, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You don't pitch you don't pitch your tent in the valley of the shadow of death. You move through it. You keep moving. You keep going through it. Let me tell you something. Let me explain something to you by the Holy Ghost and I'm closing out the message. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. When Lot when we first read about Lot leaving Abraham. Now see, when he was with Abram. God told Abram, leave your family, but he took his nephew Lot. And it cost him something when he took his nephew Lot with him. And until Lot got out of the way, God couldn't bless Abraham. But once Lot got out of the way, God said, now I can talk to you. Now I can bless you. Now the other voice that's making you crazy is out of the way. Now I can manifest my glory. And the Bible says... After Lot left, God blessed him and talked to him and reconfirmed the blessing. But this is something amazing that a lot of people have never heard before. And I'm going to show it to you right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. When he left Abraham, he pitched his tent near the city of Sodom. Next time we see him... He's at the gate of Sodom. The next time we read about him, 
He's living in Sodom. And guess what? His sons had become homosexuals. Because what you permit is what you will participate in. Why did his wife die? Because she looked back. She remembered, God, I've left some of my sons in the valley. I've left some of my kinfolk. And I want to go back for them. And when she looked, the curse came on her. You can't go back and rescue everybody. Only those that are willing to go with you when you go in God, those are the ones that you can help rescue. You can't help rescue everybody. Look at Noah. The Bible said Noah, his wife, and his sons and their wives was saved. Didn't say nothing about his mother-in-law. I guess she was too stubborn. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I'm single, so I can use that joke, all right? <laughs> hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you're watching me and you're saying, Brother HR, I want to know Jesus. I'm tired of being stuck in a Babylon moment. Lord, help me. I need what Brother HR is preaching about. If that's you, pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross, that God the Father raised you from the dead, and I am saved. Lord Jesus, wash me, cleanse me, fill me with your precious Holy Spirit that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. If you need healing, I speak healing from the body part rooms in heaven. I command a creative miracle. I rebuke every spirit of infirmity, every symptom, and I command it to go and not to return to your body in the name of Jesus, because by His stripes you were healed. In Jesus' name, and I declare deliverance for here is sense that's free is free indeed. According to Nahum 1 and 9, the attack cannot come back a second time. And I declare that we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. I declare you to go free and stay free in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray tonight that each and every person watching, that you would fill them with the Holy Ghost and with fire. In the name of Jesus, fire of God. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. I pray that you've been blessed tonight, that the Lord has touched you with this message, and that you'll go out and touch other lives, that the Holy Spirit will empower you with truth and fire, and you will go out to do the work of God. You'll be not just a hearer, but a doer of the Word. I love you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I love you. God bless you. I'll see you in the next meeting, or I'll see you in the air in heaven. I love you. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. My Lord, thank you, Jesus. We got 203 subscribers. Hallelujah. God is moving. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.